Hey there, my name is Jie Hao, and I'm a software engineer at Open Government Products, or OGP. OGP is an experimental division in the Singapore Government Technology Agency that takes a modern tech approach to public sector problems. In the past couple of years, we've devoted our efforts to supporting the Singapore government's COVID-19 response. Some of the cool things we've built include the National Vaccine Appointment System, a mobile app for monitoring home quarantines, and a digital system for government vouchers. But today, I'll be talking to you about Isomer, our end-to-end -end website solution, and how we employed various Jamstack ideas to help the Singapore government accelerate its COVID-19 response. I'm going to start by giving you a brief introduction of Isomer, and then I'm going to take a look at how official government websites have been important to our nation's pandemic response. The remainder of the time will be spent between two case studies. In the first case study, I'm going to explain how Isomer leaned on infrastructure service providers to automate and optimize the website launch process. This allowed us to create and launch urgent COVID-19 related government websites in under 36 hours. In the second case study, I will talk about how we improved our user experience with the creation of our own headless CMS, which uses GitHub as a backend. This allowed users to update their websites more quickly and reliably than before. So what exactly is Isomer? Four years ago, we conducted a study which found that our government websites were slow expensive, and had major usability issues. This represented problems for both the government agencies which maintain these websites, as well as citizens who consume them. Isomer is an end-to-end -end website solution for the Singapore government designed to fix issues on both the agency and citizen front. We wanted to make the experience of creating and updating websites user-friendly and fuss-free for government agency users. And we also wanted to create fast, reliable, and accessible websites, which citizens could easily navigate to get the information they needed from the government. Finally, we would wanted to make sure that Isomer could scale to handle all the informational websites that the Singapore government would need. To address the issues on the agency front, we need to first understand the status quo. Most government agencies employ software vendors to maintain their websites. This is often expensive and requires agencies to go through a bureaucratic procurement process. Agency users are also reliant on vendors to make updates to their website. Each update is represented by an official change request to the vendor. Isomer aims to provide an alternative. It can be used for free by all government agencies and it comes with automatic compliance with existing government regulations on tech systems. So no procurement process is required. Isomer also comes with a user-friendly CMS, which allows users to easily update their own site content whenever they want. And to address the issues on the citizen front, we started off with a simple observation that most government websites are informational websites meaning websites which are used to primarily convey news or policy updates. Since these websites don't require any fancy functionality, they serve as a great use case for static websites. This brings security benefits from the reduced attack surface, as well as performance and reliability benefits, since static sites are pre-rendered and can be served directly from a CDN. Additionally, this also gave us the opportunity to create site templates that are more accessible and provide a coherent and consistent design across all of our websites. As an end-to-end -end website solution, Isomer takes care of all the infrastructure components of a website. We store each website's content in its own repo in our GitHub organization. And when changes are made to the repo via the CMS, this triggers the site to be built and hosted on our Netlify account using a custom Jekyll theme that contains the templates we created. This in turn triggers a webhook, which pushes the latest version of the site to our CDN. 
which then serves the website to our users. This setup allows us to reuse infrastructure and design components across all of our websites. That has allowed us to scale to support more than 120 government websites with a small team of just eight people. But how does ISMR fit into the Singapore government's COVID-19 response? The answer lies in the important role that official government websites have played so far in combating COVID-19. Over the past two years, COVID-19 has dominated every aspect of our lives. As the pandemic unfurled, governments have worked around the clock to roll out policies and measures to protect its citizens and their livelihoods. They have had to do so in, an information, in a low information environment full of fake news. In fact, there's a sizable Wikipedia article on all the fake cures people have made up for COVID. In such an environment, official information sources become even more important. Governments have branched out to use multiple channels to reach out to, to as many of their citizens as possible so that they have access to the latest information on vaccines, stimulus payments, daily infection rates, and so on. In Singapore, in addition to regular press conferences, we also receive daily updates through opt-in WhatsApp or Telegram channels. Given the speed at which the situation on the ground changes, it is super important for governments to be able to push out new information quickly. And these messaging apps have been absolutely crucial in this regard. But there's only so much information you can convey in a text message. Compared to short form updates from messaging apps or social media, websites are much better at communicating more detailed information to citizens and businesses. This is an example from the Singapore government's Telegram channel. You can see that it contains chunks of bite-sized information, but it also contains several links to websites which elaborate on the details in the message. Since websites contain important information on the government's pandemic response, it is therefore crucial for the government to be able to create and update these websites quickly. Here's one example which illustrates the importance of being able to launch websites quickly. Go Business is a platform by the Singapore government which offers financial relief schemes for businesses which were badly hit by the pandemic. However, the launch of the Go Business relief measures were contingent on the launch of their website. They weren't able to publicly announce their schemes because the volume of potential queries was anticipated to exceed, exceed the support that could be provided over citizen hotlines. With a website, more citizens could self-service the information and reduce the burden on the support teams. Ultimately, it was important for the site to be launched on time so that the measures could be released to the public. This in turn ensured that businesses could receive their financial relief sooner rather than later. Using Isomer, the Go Business team was able to create, populate, and launch their website in a week. But we can go even faster. The Singapore Together website, which documented citizen experiences during the pandemic, was set up in under 36 hours. Let's have a look at how this was done. From the user's point of view, there are only three steps from site creation to site launch. Firstly, the user fills up a form with the details of their website, such as the name of the website, the government agency it belongs to, and so on. Then they can populate their website with content using the CMS. And finally, when they're ready, they can make their website go live with a single click. Behind the scenes, we set up a Lambda function, which contains the necessary code to provision and update infrastructure resources for our users. For example, when a user completes the form, a few things happen. Firstly, we receive a webhook to our Lambda. Inside this Lambda, we use the isomorphic Git library and the GitHub API to create a new repo with the default template code in our GitHub organization. We also add the necessary repo permissions and a new GitHub team to add users to the repo. And then we make an API call to Netlify to create a new website and link the newly created GitHub repo to the Netlify site via a build hook. 
After this, the user can start to populate their website with content by making changes on the CMS, which modifies the files in the GitHub repo on the user's behalf. Since the build hooks have been set up, any pushes to GitHub to the GitHub repo will automatically trigger a build on Netlify, which the user can then review. Finally, when the user is ready to go live, we trigger our Lambda again, this time to make the necessary calls to the key CDN API. Here, we create a new zone record in our CDN, referencing the user's Netlify site as the host. Subsequently, a zone alias domain is added for this zone record, which effectively launches the site for access to the public. In this case study, the fundamental Jamstack idea of supercharging with services really stands out. By using abstractions on top of services provided by domain experts, we were able to create simple interfaces for launching websites, allowing users to focus solely on content creation. In this case, in communicating pandemic-related messages from the government to citizens. We were also able to minimize the time spent on infrastructure deployment thanks to APIs and integrations made available by our infrastructure providers. Integrations such as Netlify build hooks and key CDN webhooks for purging the CDN cache enabled the continuous integration and deployment of our websites. And we were able to make use of these providers' APIs to programmatically create and modify resources according to user actions, increasing the speed of execution as well as avoiding any possible human errors. This allowed us to quickly launch urgent pandemic-related websites for the government. Now, if we look a little closer at the first case study, we'll notice that Isomer CMS plays a key role in the site launch process by providing the user with a user-friendly interface for modifying their content before site launch. The easiest way to visualize this impact is to take a look at what Isomer used to look like without the CMS. Before the CMS, our users had to pick up YAML and markdown syntax. This is a bad user experience because most of our users are civil servants without technical backgrounds. This made the learning curve steep and resulted in a lot of errors. This is exacerbated by the absence of a proper interface for modifying content. In our early days, our users were forced to edit content on the GitHub GUI. Unfortunately, this meant that there were no feedback mechanisms provided to the user. Any invalid markdown or YAML syntax causes the build to fail. Yet, users have no clear idea why their builds are failing. Error messages are often meaningless to non-technical users who don't have an understanding of how the static site generator works. This resulted in a tiresome trial and error approach where users would attempt the change, wait for the site to build, and if they do not get the result they expected, attempt another change. Again, that's a pretty bad user experience. It slows our users down significantly, and in a pandemic where time is of the essence, we would not have been able to afford such friction. And that's why we resolved to build a CMS for our users. Isomer CMS is a CMS built with React and uses GitHub directly as a backend, making it a headless CMS. Headless CMSs are easier to build and maintain since the content storage layer is decoupled from the user interface. Since Isomer already uses GitHub for content storage, all we needed to do was to build a CMS front end to access our user's repo through the GitHub API. In fact, our CMS is a Jamstack website itself. With the CMS, users now get instant feedback with what you see is what you get, or WYSIWYG capabilities, as well as input validation so that format formatting errors and invalid config values are avoided completely. In the following short demo video, you'll be able to see what this looks like. Firstly, the user logs in with their GitHub account. Since users already have GitHub accounts to modify their website content, we were able to use GitHub OAuth logins so that we didn't have to create our own authentication module. 
the user first navigates to their site where they can make changes to either their settings configuration or their content. If invalid input is entered, validation checks kick in and prevent the user from saving the page. This gives the user more certainty that their changes were successful, thus freeing them from the trial and error approach. As for content pages, any changes made are reflected immediately, providing the user with instant feedback. We also introduce abstractions for common flows, such as image uploads or image inserts to smoothen the user experience. One of the more interesting things we did in the CMS was to treat GitHub as a table in a database. We then created a GitHub service class responsible for making all API calls to GitHub. When instantiated, the GitHub service class behaves similarly to an ORM instance and contains all your usual CRUD methods as well as additional Git-specific methods. We can then call this service from our other classes as and when we need it to read from, write to, or delete a file. One of our extensions here includes atomic transactions with the GitHub API. Some behavior on the front end, which are represented by individual clicks, actually trigger multiple API calls to GitHub. If any one of these API calls fail, the repo is left in a corrupted state. To introduce more database-like functionality, we implemented a rollback mechanism where the GitHub repo is reset to its pre-transaction state using the Git database API, thus making our transactions atomic. However, the transactions would not be truly atomic if another user was concurrently modifying the repo at the same time. Since all users working on the CMS share the same branch, this could lead to inconsistent state since Git is not designed for concurrent usage on the same branch. For good measure, we introduced a mutex lock using DynamoDB as a cache to limit repo write access to a single user at a time. All in all, the CMS gave our users a smoother user experience, which allowed them to make changes more quickly without errors. But beyond that, the CMS has also played a crucial role in reducing the operational burden on the Isomer team. Before the CMS, we spent many hours onboarding, educating users on Markdown and Jekyll, and helping users to debug failing builds. With the CMS, we can now spend more time on developing new features for our users. To end off this presentation, I would like to highlight how the Jamstack is really another word for the concept of force multiplication. Despite our small team size, Isomer hosts more than 120 websites and comes with an extensive suite of services, such as a CMS and free SSL search from Let's Encrypt. We were only able to do this by offloading infrastructural complexity to domain experts like GitHub and Netlify and creating abstractions over these providers' APIs. Just like how Isomer allows its users to focus on content creation, our usage of these services enabled us to focus on creating more functionality for our users instead of having to worry too much about security and other infra matters. For more details on Isomer, please visit our website or the pin repos in our GitHub organization. If you have any questions or comments on Isomer, please also feel free to ping me at tiehao at open.gov.sg. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of GemStack Comp 2021. Sit, Jamstack, sit. Woof, woof. Good boy.